the Black Heart album, of course, it came out last November, so now about half a year later. What kind of experience has it been for you, you know, re- releasing album in such an extraordinary time? Um, it's been really interesting, I guess. Um, uh, cool, cool in a way because it's been like about three years now since I've joined the band. So the album itself has been kind of a long time coming and it's been in the works for a little while. So it's exciting to finally put it out. And I've kind of been just as excited to hear music from bands that we're friends with or bands that I enjoy. They then put stuff out as well during, during all of this. And so I hope people kind of look at it the same way. Um, it's also tough obviously, because nobody's able to tour until, you know, now we're seeing, festivals and tour announcements and stuff um happen by hopefully by the end of the year uh hopefully none of that gets canceled but so it's kind of in this like tug of war of like excited but like a little bummed out at first that you can't do anything but now we're seeing that light at the end of the tunnel so it's kind of circled back around to being excited and that's probably the most the most overwhelming in a good way feeling is probably excitement but uh interesting for sure because it's you know you can push and push but unless you're out on the road then it's not the same as what you would hope for i guess yeah it's great that you can you know see the positive side too uh the band has been pretty active on the visual side of things uh you have released three videos and uh, your own interviews so do you have you kind of paid extra attention to that now that you can't tour uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, we had we've had a bunch of stuff planned out that we were doing. I mean, you can't. It's one thing to release an album, I guess, during this quarantine and stuff, but then you know, not really follow it up with anything. I mean, I think I think we've done our best to work with the label on keeping content coming out. So even though we can't actually play live shows, that we can still put stuff out there that's entertaining and keep the fans engaged, that kind of thing. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, like you've noticed, we've had like our own little interview sessions that, that me and Joe did, uh, we had that live stream, um, you know, all kinds of stuff. And like you said, the music videos too. So, I mean, we've kind of done the best that we could, you know, keeping content and, uh, staying as relevant as possible. I mean, like, like you noticed it was from November, so it's tough to <clears throat> keep the ball rolling that long without losing some steam. But I think we've done a pretty good job of keeping interactions going on the internet until we're able to announce some shows and get ready for that stuff. So we've done the best that we could, you know, and I think that's all anybody could really ask for these days anyways. Let's go back to Blackheart a bit. And I read somewhere that you had a mountain of things to get off your chest. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So what sure. was up? What are these 10 songs about? Um, I mean, the a big focus of it was... Uh, I guess I, I could put it under the umbrella of a lot of um, anger and um, just personal issues and uh, honestly, just to be blunt about it, just shitty people. Um, my experience with a relationship that I, I guess you could say I thought that I was in um, and in some of the circumstances that surrounded that with people related to the situation and then also like my dealing with it, you know, after for months and months. Um, and then, so it's a lot of like personal, personal issues is, is really what it was. It was a very, uh, <clears throat> a lot of stuff inside that I really needed to get outside. And before I even knew that I was joining the band, I was writing a lot of this stuff out um, just because that's my natural uh, process. I think is if some, if I feel something or think something, uh, I have like a note section in my phone where I'm going to write out write out how I feel and I've got, you know, I, I'll put it in lyrics form, you know, either right then or later. Um, and then another one, another big one on the album was uh, one of my best friends uh, a few years ago took his own life. So that's kind of under that same umbrella of just, there's a lot of anger and sadness, you know, going on and just things I'm trying to push forward through um, and kind of all just tied into this really dark, aggressive record is what it turned into. Uh, and so I, was a it was a tough process going through those you know few years of all these things but also uh therapeutic to write them down in the first place but then the guys bringing me on board um and then being accepting of the lyrical content and where i was coming from personally uh, and giving me the platform to actually put that stuff out there uh so i'm I'm really 
grateful to have that opportunity. So it's it's just a really dark, aggressive, personal uh, album, and it's kind of it touches on some stuff that the band's not really done before in other albums, and that's not a bad thing. It's just something different. So it uh, is has been a bit of a roller coaster, I guess you could say, but all in a better place now in every way, you know, that it's out. But a lot of it was just just a bunch of shit, man, that I had going on. And I, ha I had to say it. I had to say some stuff. Well, you know, uh, I know why I can, you know, listen to angry and aggressive music, you know, day to day because it helps me vent. But how is it on the other side? How is it for you to kind of, you know, be writing and making this music and performing it? It's... Like I said earlier, therapeutic, but also kind of tough at the same time. Um, like when I was a kid and I was first getting into heavy music, a lot of it was new metal and stuff. I would hear a lot of aggression, but passion in a lot of these singers voices, guys like Corey Taylor, um, Chad from Mudbane, Chester Bennington, uh, all, all these guys, Jonathan Davis. Um, they'd have this like raw passion in their in their voices and you could hear like that they were, you know, dealing with shit and i not all of it i could connect to on a personal level but the idea of being upset and putting that out on display i connected with and i it always stuck with me and my brain was like a sponge at the time soaking all that stuff in and i connected with them being on the other side of it like the guy in the crowd you know listening to that person put their feelings out there and so I've always kind of tried to do that with the stuff that I write because somebody else is going to be out there listening to what I'm saying now and connecting with that and it's going to help them out. So I try to do things from an artistic perspective um, because I'm on that side of the fence now, but I also look at it from the other side of when I was young and somebody was listening, I was listening to somebody else. Uh, I want somebody else to have that same connection that made me fall in love with heavy music too that they aren't the only person that feels feelings, you know, like people go through shit and that's nothing to be ashamed of. So I would hope that I don't have to write this record again, whatever the next one is going to be. I'm sure, I hope it's completely different. Um, but going through the process was, I mean, just the situations in real life were just super rough, but um, it took a toll on me mentally, but then also kind of having to revisit them, writing everything out. Uh, some of those nights weren't easy. And then also recording that those, some of those songs weren't, weren't very easy. Like the, I mean, the one that, the one that I did for my, my buddy that, uh, took his own life uh, to track on the album called Reckless and writing that one was really tough. That was a long night. And then I actually lost my voice in the studio trying to record that song. Um, so, I mean, it was a process, man. Uh, and I've gotten a lot of uh, comments saying that you can, you can hear that in the songs, uh, that one specifically, like you can hear that in my voice. And I really appreciate that as much pain as it was to go through all those things and to write and record those songs, I, I to receive um, compliments and things like that, where people noticed, the little details and emo and passion that I put into it is really, uh, I'm really grateful for it. So as much as it was, as much of a tough time as that all of it was previously, the end product was well worth, well worth all of it. So good, but you know, good now, bad then, but overall though, it's cool. Cool now. Yeah. Like you said that, um, Maybe hopefully the next album will be something else. So what kind of uh, other sources of inspiration do you use? You know, I don't know. It's um, it's really tough to say. I mean, because it took a lot. This this album took a lot out of me mentally. So I, um, I mean, I've got like a, a bunch of stuff written from, from before anyways, uh, just random ideas. But it's kind of tough to say. Because um, like I said, I don't want to write this record again. It would just... It would, First of all, because I don't want to go through any of that again, I also wouldn't want to fake fake any of these emotions. Everything I wrote for Blackheart is all real. It's all stuff that actually happened. Uh, so I wouldn't want to fake that again. Um, and it would just be redundant. I don't want to I don't want to put that record out again for just for those reasons. Um, but it's tough to say. I mean, there's so much going on in the world lately. It's tough to it's tough to say. I mean, 
bands have already done like a you know a, a covid song they've already done like a virus song that's already been done so to put one out now if you're that train has left the station but i mean there's so much political drama and all kinds of stuff going on who i mean who knows we're not a political band by any means but um there's 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 enough going on in the world i could probably find something to write about or may, maybe come up with like another concept album uh who knows it's it's just really early it's tough to say because the album just came out and um you know i'm always, I'm always trying to think of stuff I'm, I'm i'm already thinking about what that next one's going to be i just so early there's no way to tell for sure uh as long as it's not black heart 2 <laughs> i'm good <laughs> like you said you know uh the last album is still fresh but you know uh, thinking forward like you said that you hope to get on touring of course as soon as possible but can you even imagine, you know, releasing more new music, you know, and not with uh, without the possibility of going on gigs? Um, possibly. I mean, there's we do have stuff that we're working on. Um, we've got ideas of other content to <clears throat> to put out. I can't say too much about it yet, just um, just in case. Uh, but it's it kind of all comes from we haven't been able to tour, so let's see what else we can do in the meantime. Uh, we are working on stuff. I just can't say too much about it yet. But the ideas have already started showing up in Dropbox for for what we're what we want to do next. Um, but I need to leave it there. I can't say too much else past that. But uh, we are we are very much thinking every step of what the future is going to be, whether up until the end of the year, what next year is going to look like. More music. We're thinking about all of it. So, but I just I can't can't say too much just yet. Yeah, absolutely. Talking about future plans, uh, in a couple of years the band will celebrate actually it's two decades. So like you said, you joined the band uh, about three years ago and you know, they yeah, three. took you mm -hmm. in. So what kind of uh, thoughts and feelings does that bring up to be hopefully celebrating the two decades with the band? It is. Um, it is a, a celebration still. Um, I actually looked in my uh, on this day in Facebook earlier, and today is the um, like the actual day that Tim had his last show with the band. It was at uh, New England Metal Fest, uh, April twenty first, um, and he did that whole last set. And then I came out for the last song, and we kind of split it like halfway through, and we back and forthed it. And there's a bunch of cool pictures of like him and I on stage at the same time, and like kind of hugging like right when it's done, and um, so it's always going to be sort of an emotional day um, in, a, in a cool way. And um, I really enjoy those moments that got captured because it's it helps show show the grace that Tim had in passing me that torch to do it and not being like a salty or negative situation um, because we've been friends for a while. So yeah, before that, before I joined. So if anyone was going to take his position, he was happy that it was me. So um yeah, I'd, so it's you know funny you asked the question, but I came across that today. So it's it's definitely an emotional day. It's really cool, um, it's, and uh, even more so now that the album is out. So it's kind of interesting looking back at that day of his final moments with the band on stage, <clears throat> and then after that, it was it. He was you know he was done, and three years later, there's an album out. So at that point, like I was you know still learning some of the songs and uh 